With this workshop, we start the LIFE project that was awarded to FSR Climate on supporting the implementation of the EU ETS. In this workshop, what we intend is to get the views from different stakeholders so that policy makers get feedback and the system is improved. At the Florence School of Regulation Climate, we have analyzed the empirical research done on the UTS uh, with respect to free allowances allocation. Uh, we have uh, found more than 80 works on this subject. A first group of work has analyzed the impact of the UTS on the competitiveness and carbon leakage of the regulated industry. These are the two main reasons to give free allowances to installations. Uh, by far, uh, it was found that uh, uh, there are no um, uh, empirical evidence that uh, the UTS had strong negative impact on the competitiveness of the regulated industry. And thus, the risk of carbon leakage for these past years uh, was very low. A second group of papers look at the ability of the regulated company to pass through the cost to consumers. Uh, if a company can do it, can pass its carbon cost to consumers, it means that it should be able to pay for the allowances without hampering its competition. For the electricity sectors, it was found a very high rate of cost pass-through. Uh, that's because the power sector does not face international competition. While for the industrial sectors, the results are mixed. Uh, the pass rate was found high for some sectors. Uh, in other sectors, it depends on the products or where the product is produced, while in other sectors, it is very low. A third group of study has analyzed uh, the uh, system of uh, free allowances allocation for phase three. There was a great improvement on allowances allocation from phase one and two to phase three. In the first two phases, almost all allowances were given for free, while now auctioning is the preferred method of allowances allocation. In particular, almost all allowances in the electricity sector are auctioning, which is justified because, as I said before, the electricity sector can pass through the cost to consumers. In the industrial sector, still, most of the um, allowances are given for free, but using a benchmarking system which rewards the most efficient installation. However, uh, there are still some uh, criticality in, in the system. Uh, for example, sometimes it's difficult to um, calculate the benchmarking, especially for sectors which are very different type of products or very different type of production. Uh, but probably the most uh, critical point is that, that was found uh, is that uh, many sectors which were deemed at risk of carbon leakage and thus that receive a higher share of uh, free allowances, uh, probably they were not at risk, at least for these past years. So uh, together with um, colleagues at uh, Imperial College uh, in London, I've studied this question in a, a large scale survey um, where we interviewed managers of uh, manufacturing firms uh, over the telephone. And uh, somewhat to our surprise, uh, the majority of managers told us that uh, carbon leakage uh, is actually not uh, a, a big problem in the sense that uh, carbon pricing will not uh, drive them to uh, relocate their, their business. Uh, and an implication of that is that the current uh, rules for allocating free uh, allowances under the carbon leakage decision are too generous. Um, our suggestion to fix this problem is to uh, no longer allocate free permits to industries that are uh, trade exposed per se, but only uh, if they also uh, exhibit very carbon intensive uh, production processes. Uh, and in so doing, by auctioning off the excess allowances, uh, the Commission could raise uh, an additional revenue of approximately 500 uh, million euros per year at the current prices. Uh, without actually increasing the risk of carbon leakage. We have uh, created uh, the ETS as a system where initially there is uh, free allocation, uh, meaning that those participating are get, getting compensated. Now obviously as we go moving towards uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, this system has to go away, have to replace uh, with something else. Now, the complication we're facing is that uh, 
industry and especially some industries more than others have now become accustomed to having these uh, freely allocated allowances, which gives them an extra revenue streams. Over time, it becomes clear these allowances get fewer and fewer. And now the question we are facing today is how can we target them that we really give them to the ones that are in need. At the moment, all of them get them, so it's spread out for too many. And now what are the tools, what are the mechanisms, and what also, also what are the political processes actually to get to a point where we give them to those in need to maintain European competitiveness, keeping jobs and growth in Europe. Okay, for the future of free allocation, three things are important. It's first of all, what is the risk of carbon leakage in a post-Paris world where all actors have committed to tackle global warming and also where the market for low carbon, product, uh, low carbon technologies is much bigger than today. A second concern for the future of free allocation is, is an element of equity. Is giving free pollution permits to industry fair for the society as large, knowing that governments otherwise could have auctioned these allowances and gained a lot of money from it? So at, the time, at this time we see corporations making a lot of windfall profits from the system. Um, while a lot of people, for example, in energy poverty are not getting uh, any, anything back from the system. So this element of equity, what do you do with this pollution permit, uh, is also important for the future of free allocation. And finally, uh, it's also important is whether giving free allowances is an effective approach to tackle carbon leakage, which is why we give these free allowances in the first place. Is it helping um, uh, to stop carbon leakage uh, or can there be other approaches that also uh, implement the polluter space principles? For example, auctioning in combination with mortar measures could be one uh, solution. And whether there is still an incentive for energy intensive industry to decarbonize uh, when they uh, get their permits to pollute for free. We had a pretty, pretty good and uh, a thorough analysis this afternoon. Uh, on taking the cap on ETS going down, that is a reality of a of fact. The cap is going down. At the same time, the international trade is really in full swing. So the challenge upon us this afternoon was to um, um, envision the future of ETS even going beyond the phase four starting in 2021. And in many aspects, first and foremost, how to make this tool an instrument to a, a smooth transition of the European society and industry into, into low carbon emissions, first and foremost, whilst, and this is important, whilst um, um, keeping the innovation engine uh, in Europe for the European society and beyond. Um, so those uh, are the primary challenge. And the other one was also to um, uh, exchange, exchange views on how to um, um, keep the, uh, the best performing industries um, alive in Europe and even growing, developing future innovation, innovative products in Europe whilst keeping jobs and growth in Europe as well. So that was primary, the main aim and challenges uh, that we hopefully addressed uh, nicely in this uh, uh, project uh, going forward.